No matter what kind of videos you're making, chances are you have used some kind of editing program throughout that journey. Well, if you're anything like me, you're always looking for something that will make your life that much easier, have the program be that much better. The question is, did I just find what I was looking for? What's going on? If you are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Josh Haynes. I'm a freelance filmmaker and I bring out videos that help you guys grow as creators. Today we're checking out an editing platform called HitFilm. We're gonna see if this platform is something that's gonna help us out or if it's not gonna help us out at all. Disclaimer before we get too far in this video, they did send me the software for free to check out and talk about it and review it on the channel. However, it is not gonna impact anything I'm gonna say. If for some reason this editor sucks, if for some reason this editor is not making my life that much easier, Easier, or I just don't think it's good in general, I'm gonna let you know about it and they can kiss my butt. So let's jump inside hit film and we'll get going. So what we want to do is make a new project. So we're gonna go right here on the top left, create new. You could also hit command N on a Mac. It's gonna pop up with the other keyboard shortcuts on whatever computer you're using. So right here we have an editor page and we have a rendering page. I'm gonna focus on the editor page right now because that's what we're going into. Here you have video to where you actually could change the width and height and the frame rate of what you're wanting it to be. However, I just like clicking the templates they have up here at the top and we're gonna go down to a 4K. Let's do 4K UHD 23976. Everything looks good. Sure, I'm happy with that. We're gonna hit okay. It's gonna launch our new project. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just look around right here at the beginning. First time diving in here. Uh, we can see we have our viewer over here as well as you have a layer and you have export settings. So that's kind of nice. It's all right there in the top right as well as the one next to it. You have a trimmer, which I'm assuming is where you view the clips before you'd pull it in. You have an audio mixer where your effects and some things would be like that. So so that's nice. And then underneath it, you have your editor where you'll have your video tracks, your audio tracks. Then on the left side, you have effects, history, text. And then above that, you have your library and media controls. I'm sure you can probably lay these out in a little bit different configurations. If we click up here on the window, click over the workspace. Yeah, they're gonna have a whole bunch of different ones. They're gonna have organize. So it's laid out a little bit more the organized stuff. Uh, we can go back to the window. We could go to all panels and it's gonna pop everything in like the way we had it. We could go back to the window, we could go maybe just to editing, and that's what we're in right here. There's so many different ways to lay this out, and I like that they make it customizable for you, the user, so you can figure out what works best for you. So I'm gonna go to media right here on the bottom left. We are gonna go to import because that's what I wanna grab is some footage. I have some footage right here from a concert. I am gonna hover over a lot of it. So let's say it's 163 gigs is what I'm pulling in. And this is some big files. This is FX6 at 60 frames, 10 bit. Uh, I do like that it is already loading it in really freaking fast, like really fast. Uh, and normally you will have some little scroll wheels down here if your editor is processing clips still. I did see it for a split second that there was a little bit of loading. And again, that may vary depending on the computer you have. Every editor is a little different. Theirs is that way. Premiere Pro has it in the bottom right where it's got the little line showing when clips are being imported and processed, whether it's creating proxies, so on and so forth. You know, DaVinci Resolve's the same, Final Cut's the same. So we have these clips down here. I'm gonna double click on this one. I'm gonna kind of scroll to where I think is cool. I like that right there. I'm gonna hit I. Yep, on the keyboard, it's gonna set an endpoint. I'm gonna hit O and it's gonna set an out point. If you hover up here, it's showing use video or use audio. I'm assuming if you grab it right here, it is going to bring both of it. It's also asking the editor sequence settings are different than the clip you are adding. Do you want to change the editor sequence settings? It's because my frame rates are different than what the clip is. I'm gonna hit no because I want to be able to slow clips down. If you wanted it to be the same and not slow clips down, that would be the way you would do it. Uh, I don't want the audio, so we're gonna delete that actually. I'm gonna grab just video and we're gonna drop that in there. I'm gonna hit remember my choices so it doesn't ask me again. I'm gonna hit no. I like that it's already got our position arrows right there. I'm gonna hit command Z, which undoes. It's kind of a universal thing on Mac. I'm gonna let that load for a second. You can see it's a little jittery, so there should be some kind of render bar that will normally pop up to indicate if the clip has rendered. Yep, you can see it right there. Let's play it again, flawless. 
It was a little slow than I prefer. I'm assuming it's just because it's a very big clip, so we'll give it that. I also did not dive into any of the settings to optimize this the way I prefer for editing a video. So over here to the left, we have our toolbar, we have our select tool, we have our drag tool, we have our slice tool, we have our split tool, we have our slide tool, we have our ripple edit tool, we have our roll edit tool, we have our rate stretch tool, and then we also have our track select tool. That's a lot of tools. So I'm having issues, let's say. I do really like that they have the learn tab right up here on the top left. So we can just click that and it's gonna bring over all of these tutorials that they've already done. So that is so helpful that they're there and you can unclick it, it goes away to the left out of your view. So if we click on effects, let's try to see if we can change some color. So let's just type in color and see if anything comes up. Color space converter, so if you need to change something, let's say we wanna add brightness and contrast, adjust the color, whatever we're wanting to do. So let's do a grade. Let's bring this right over on top so it would affect everything. Let's say we want to, I don't know, make more brightness and contrast on it. We're gonna drag and drop it. We're gonna scroll down right here, boom, brightness. So let's say we wanna blow the crap out of that and we wanna add way more contrast so it's very stylized. You can do that, you can click it on and off, see what it looks like, you can A-B test it. As well as let's say let's we wanna change the color temperature. Let's drop it there. Let's bring this down. Color temperature is set to 49. Let's bring this to something different. That is way different, but it is cool. And again, this is affecting everything because we have it set as a grade on top. If we wanted to shut that off, we could shut that off. We could set the color temperature on individual clips. So now if we clicked on that clip over here under controls, we could adjust it just a little bit. Maybe it's a little too warm. Maybe we want a little cooler to match this one so it's not so dramatic. Maybe we want it really dramatic. Let's bring it real far and do that. Maybe we want to auto contrast and we just add it so it's going to auto do the contrast for us. Of course, underneath it, you could do different contrast, curves, dehazers, everything you're wanting to do. But I do like at the top, they've got those auto ones. So if you're new to this, it's really going to help you out. I definitely say learn this stuff, but it is nice that those are there, that if you're in a hurry, it can sometimes just do it for you and really help you out. Let's say we're completely happy with that and we want to export this out now. So let's go right to the end of it. Let's set an out point. We have two different options. We have an export right here and we have an export right here. So let's click on that one and it's gonna drop down to export now as in and out area or the contents. So if I have multiple things set up in my timeline, like multiple videos, which I don't recommend, but if you need to do that, you could set an in and out point and it's only gonna export the things that you want. Or you can have it set to content, which we're gonna do for this because that's the only content that's on there. I can see that it's already rendering it for me at YouTube 1080 HD. If I wanted to change that under the export button at the bottom, there are different presets. It's going to probably determine at the beginning what it thinks you should be doing based on your actual project settings. However, if I wanted to also make it be Apple ProRes 422, I could probably do that, uh, but we don't really need that to be that big of a video. We're gonna let that be done. It gave me a little indicator, it is done. It's gonna show me where it put it on my computer. Let's see if we click on that. It's gonna bring it right to where it's at on my computer. Then I could I just play it, I could see it full size, Everything looks good and you're done. You're just uploading that up to whatever platform you're wanting it to be, airdrop it to your phone, whatever you're gonna do, that's it. Of course, there are so many things you can do that we're not touching on today. If we're wanting to add a text or a grade, you'd click new clip, you'd go to plain text or grade. You can add all of those in there uh, and then it'll pop up here on the controls in your left. We'll click on the clip, you can see it's all right there. It's really laid out really nice and intuitive. As well as if we want to have a voiceover, we could do it right here. There are so many things that we're not diving into today because we just don't have time. If you guys are wanting to see me dive more into hit films and do more to tutorials, more in-depth stuff specifically to it, please bomb me in the comments below. I will happily start adding this into my video lineup. And this software, they have a paid version as well as they have a free version. So if it's something you're gonna wanna upgrade down the road, 
download the free one, see if it works for you. Maybe this will help you edit and get a lot more comfortable with the program. There are so many editing programs because they are meant to help other people out. I personally love DaVinci Resolve, but I've got to say, HitFilms is really impressing me and there's really no wrong editing software. Whatever is going to help you out as a creator and make your videos, that's the software you should be using. There'll be a link in the description below if you guys wanna check out this editor, download it, see if it works for you. Maybe you will really like it and it'll just be your new NLE of choice. It's really up to you. You are the creator. You know what makes your life easier. That's it for me today. You're amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. See you next time. Peace.